Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hashraptor YouTube channel. Hey, today we are going to take a look again at this 3060 Ti. This is the NVIDIA Founders Edition card. I picked this up a few weeks ago. I did the unboxing here on the channel. We took a look at the initial hash rates, but I've been out of town for a few weeks and I learned a few things. There's a few known issues on this card that you need to be aware of in case you pick one up. But I also, more importantly, wanted to kind of show you some of the algos that we've been testing so you can see how this card is performing. Now there are a few other cards that are going to be coming in the very near future from NVIDIA, but at the moment I do think this is probably the best card on the market for mining right now, if you can get your hands on it. I mean, that's the caveat, right? So let's take a look at what we got, guys. Let's jump in. Here we go. We can do anything together. If we just try, yeah. and as long as we have our backs, we never our faults come by. This time we will win. This time we'll have to join forces. This time we will win. This time we'll have to join forces. Okay, folks, let's jump right in. We're going to use whattomine.com. You've never used it before. This is where you can input your hash rate, your wattage, and run a calculation that will give you an idea of what kind of profits you can make on a daily basis. So as you can see here, we're starting with a blank slate. And I'm going to do today's testing in HiveOS. So let's jump over there, and we are going to take a look at one of the more popular algorithms, which is Ethash. Okay, so this is my 3060 Ti rig. It's called Solo because we have a Solo GPU in here. And you can see on Ethash right now we're at 62.22 mega hash. And it's been really, really solid. I've actually been testing this since last night, playing around with it. I got a bunch of invalid shares above 63 and a half. Uh, so I backed it down and this seems to be one of the higher overclocks that I can run and keep this stable right here at minus 500 on the core and 2900 on the memory and 120 watts. And on the NVIDIA side of the house, when you adjust this power limit, 120, you're actually setting a firm wattage. And again, on NVIDIA, this is pretty accurate right here. Now on the memory, we're at 2900. I've been talking with several folks that have 3060 Ti's and you can definitely get about 61 to 61 and a half and keep this at a lower overclock, somewhere between maybe 2000 or 2500 and get really good results as well. But I've just been pushing the limit because it's, it stayed pretty solid. And we can take a look at the miner here. If I switch over to shell in a box and you can see 62, 61.99, 62, it's bouncing around a little bit. We're gonna call this 62 for our calculation. And we are at 120 watts. Double check that in the miner. Yep, 119.8 watts. So we're gonna call this 62 mega hash at 120 watts. Let's run a quick calculation. Okay, so our first return here on Ethereum we are mining at $4.82 a day, and that's profit. Uh, before electric, we are at five ten. So good, the so it's so solid, especially if you can get this card at retail prices. Really good return right there. If you want to convert this to Bitcoin, you can definitely mine directly to the Ethash algorithm on NiceHash and have it auto converted. And sometimes this is ahead of what you can get, depending on what the contracts look like. Uh, by mining Ethereum directly, and sometimes it lags, like what you're seeing here. So you're actually getting about 32 cents more by mining Ethereum directly. And we've got our cost. I should have said this in the beginning. Our cost is at 10 cents. I'm actually at 11, but I'm going to leave this at 10 just for this overview because I've, I've found that 10 cents is a pretty good average for folks that I talk to all over the world. So we're going to leave it at 10 cents uh, per kilowatt hour US. And what I want to do is I'm going to select uh, a 2080 Ti here, and we're going to run a calculate just to see what kind of other algorithms are close that are popular right now 
uh, that we want to test. You can see Cuckoo Cycle, which is the algorithm for Eternity. It's also the algorithm for BitTube Cache is really popular right now. So we'll definitely test those. You can see Firo, which is running MTP. This is formerly Zcoin. And there's a few others down here. We'll probably, Kapow is always popular. I love Ravencoin, it's a great project. So we're gonna to try to test as many of these as we can today. Let's, uh, let's move over, let's go ahead and do Cuckoo Cycle and see what kind of results that we get on this 3060 Ti. So I'm gonna mine Cuckoo Cycle on the nice hash algorithm because we're gonna get the same results and that way I'm not scattering uh, too much of my hash rate around the web. I can actually uh, keep this hash rate and get paid out on it. Okay, folks, we are up and mining Cuckoo Cycle here. And you can see right out of the gate with no overclocks at all, our power limit's at 120 watts still. We are at 7.183 graphs per second, which seems to be pretty solid. I was doing a little bit of reading on two miners and I saw these hash rates for eternity mining and I saw the 1080 was at 5.3 this says souls per second but I think they meant to put graphs per second here I may have just done a copy and paste and the 1080 Ti looks like it's at 6.9 and the 2080 is at 8.3 well right out of the gate before we've done any overclocks we're at 7.2 so let's play around with this a little bit and see exactly how well we can do. Okay guys, so we have been up and running for about 20 minutes and I did increase the wattage. So 8.2 graphs per second, that puts us right around the same hash rate that we saw on the 2080 Ti because this is core intensive, core intensive algorithm. So what I'm doing is dropping the memory and next I'm gonna drop the power limit and restart the miner yet again and see how efficient we can get this. We'll probably, once we drop that wattage, we'll probably be down in the seven graphs per second range, but I will give it a shot and be right back, guys. Okay, here we go, guys. I think this is gonna be our setting. So we're just under 7.7 .7 graphs per second, right at about 7.67 graphs per second, and we are at 130 watts. So let's go ahead and punch that in. So Cuckoo Cycle, we're at 7.67 at 130 watts. Let's calculate that. Okay, so you can see on Eternity and BitTube, we're really close, let's see here. Well, maybe about just under a dollar away from what we're seeing on Ethash. Uh, so we're at $3.19 per day after electric or three fifty one dollars before electric's calculated in. And I will say over the last 24 to 48 hours, I've seen both of these jumping up in competition with F hash actually, which bodes pretty well for us miners in the future if eth hash goes to proof of stake and we need some other coins to mine. It's nice, uh, nice seeing some of these algorithms move up the charts a bit. Okay, up next, guys, we're gonna try an old favorite, which is Ravencoin, which is on the Kapow algorithm based off of Progpal. And if you are mining Ravencoin, this probably isn't a bad time since not a lot of folks are. You could probably stack a lot of coin if you think that the price is going to jump in the future. That being said, let's fire it up. Here we go. All right, we are up and mining on Kapow, the Ravencoin algorithm. And we are using T-Rex version 0.19.5. And right out of the gate, we're at 23.56 mega hash per second. And let's take a look at the HiveOS settings. So you can see we don't have any overclocks on the core of the memory. Power is at 120 watts and we're at about 23.55 mega hash. Now when I was Googling around a bit, I found on Mining Chamber actually that they had done some testing for Kapow and they got 27 mega hash per second at 190 watts. Okay, so that did help a bit. We jumped up to 27.39 mega hash. We went to 200 on the core, 800 on the memory, and 190 watts still. And it looks like with the fan at 50% temperature, still staying pretty solid at 54 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we got a really good result here, guys. This is really, really good. We're at 26.75 mega hash per second. That's with the power limit at 130 watts, the memory at 800, and the core clock at 200. So definitely shaving off, what is that, 60 watts. We're gonna run with this 26.63 mega hash. So let's drop that in on what to mine. 
come down here to Kapow, 6.63, 130 watts, and let's calculate that. Okay, you can see Ethash is still at the top of the list. Then we've got Cuckoo Cycle, Eternity, BitTube Cash, and Ravencoin. Uh, $1.84 per day, so definitely not anywhere close to the $5 that you would get on Ethereum. Now, that being said, if you've got a long-term outlook and you've got a long-term thesis around a project, you know, you're going to be holding your coin much longer and you may be able to sell it at a much higher rate. So, just depends on when you're wanting to sell this. All right, up next is Beam, and we are mining away. We are at 27.2 souls per second, and that's at about 120 watts. And if you look over here in Hive, you can see we've got our core at zero, memory at zero, 120 watts, 27.18. And we are using Mini Z, by the way. So let me play around with this a little bit, see how much more efficient we can get it, and I'll be right back. All right, folks, we are back. I think we've got a pretty good result here. We're running at 150 watts, and we are at 31.3 to 31.7 souls per second, and that equates to 0.21 souls per watt. Now, let me go ahead and tell you, I did some testing around 130 watts, and you can get this efficiency upwards of 0.23, maybe 0.24, souls per watt if efficiency is what you're going for but we're going to stick with this number right here let's see here let's, that jumped to 32.2 let's go with uh let's go with 31.7 at 150 watts let's drop that into what to mine 1.7 at 150 watts and let's calculate that we're at a dollar 45 per day after electric a dollar 81 before electric and if you mine to NiceHash and have it auto-converted to Bitcoin, you're at $1.37 a day or $1.73 before electric. All right, now we are going to mine some Firo, also known as Zcoin, and we are going to use T-Rex again, version 0.19.5, and the algo is MTP. And right out of the gate, we are at just under three mega hash per second on MTP here. And let's take a look at our settings. We're at 120 watts on the power limit, zero on the memory, and zero on the core clock. So I'll make some adjustments and let's see what we can do. Okay, folks, I think we found a really solid setting here for Firo. We are at 3.55 mega hash per second and that is at 149 watts. Jump over here and show you. So you can see right here, 150 watts. We've got our memory set at 1000 or at 150. And honestly, you can drop both these just a little bit. Um, I didn't see a huge difference right here, but these are pretty solid settings at 3.549 mega hash. So you can actually push this upwards of about 190 watts and that'll get you close to four mega hash on this card. But if you want a good middle of the road setting here, I really like this one, 3.543 and 150 watts. It's pretty decently efficient. So let's drop that into what to mine. So we are on MTP, 3.54 at 150 watts. And let's calculate that. All right, this is looking pretty good. So Firo on the MTP algorithm is at $2.74. That's after electric, before electric, we're at $3.10 per day. And let's just do a look at how everything turns out. Just doing a snapshot for today. So we've got Ethereum at the top, Eternity, Firo, BitTube, NiceHash Cuckoo Cycle, and then Ravencoin, and further down here is Beam. Now there are a bunch of these other algorithms that I do want to test, I just don't have time to today. I'd like to try some Veil, some Swap for sure, Aeon, absolutely. So if you've got any favorites, guys, leave it in the comments below. We will try to add to these findings that we've got up here and continue to build and let you guys know what we're finding. So hopefully you found this useful today. Let me give you a couple quick reminders before we go though. Be sure that you update to the latest drivers. Make sure on Ethereum that you apply your overclocks after the DAG is built. And that being said, I didn't 
dive into that too much on Kapow or Progpal, but they have DAGs as well. So probably just to be safe, go ahead and apply your overclocks there. If you all have any experience with that, let me know. Put that in the comments below. Okay, we'll wrap there, guys. Uh, good hashing. Wish you luck, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.